Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining me today. Um, for those of you who don't know, <clears throat> my name's Lucy and I'm the Marketing Executive for the Tourism in Northern Territory. So <clears throat> today I'm just going to kind of give you an overview of the Northern Territory, where to go, what experiences to do um, and how to get around. So just a bit of basics. This is where the Northern Territory sits in regards to Australia. It's really, really easy to get here. You can actually fly um, from, from Singapore. Darwin is only a four and a half hour flight. And from Bali, it's only a two and a half hour flight. Um, from the UK, the most popular route is probably um, the UK to stopping off in Singapore with Singapore Airlines and then flying into Darwin. But if you're coming elsewhere in from elsewhere in Australia, you can fly to Darwin or Alice Springs from most uh, major Australian cities. You can also get the train. So we've got the Garn Railway that runs from Adelaide in South Australia up to Darwin. Um, and also we've got really well connected highway highways. So you can drive over from Western Australia, South Australia and Queensland. So here's just a really simplified view of the NT. Um, when we talk about the Northern Territory, we split it into two regions. So we've got the top end, which is made up of Darwin, Kakadu, Arnhem Land and Catherine. And we've got the red centre, which is made up of Tennant Creek, Alice Springs and Uluru. So I'm going to start with the top end today and highlight the key destinations and experiences here. And then I'll move on to the red centre. So the top end is very green. It's very tropical. It's absolutely teeming with wildlife and incredible waterfalls. Um, the many national parks are absolutely stunning and it's a really perfect place for nature lovers and adventure seekers. So the top end actually has two distinct seasons. So we've got the dry season, which runs from May through to October. And this means that the days are sunny um, and the nights and warm and the nights are slightly cooler. And this is the best time of year to visit for hiking, um, cycling, bushwalking, uh, camping, and then kind of outdoor activities. And it's also a great time of year for outdoor events um, and festivals. Um, we've got tons in the Northern Territory, so it's a really fun time of year to visit. And then the other season is the tropical summer, which runs November through to April. So this is when the humidity increases um, and the monsoon rains arrive. This is a really good time of year to see our wetlands and our waterfalls really come to life. Um, plus also actually during the tropical summer, you can secure cheaper hotel rates, there's more availability and there will be less people around. So I'm gonna start in Darwin, our vibrant and multicultural capital city. Darwin is known as the gateway to the Northern Territory. It's where the international airport is and it's the closest capital city in Australia to Asia, being only two and a half hours from Bali and four and a half hours from Singapore. So there's plenty to do in Darwin and we recommend staying a good couple of nights to make the most of the city. It always feels like summer in Darwin with a year round temperature of about 32 degrees. So it's a very outdoorsy city. We've got, you know, outdoor markets, local um, outdoor dining and lots of adventure activities as well. Local markets um, are a really big part of uh, Darwin's personality and a favourite for most is to visit Mindle Beach Sunset Markets. So this is Mindle Beach you can see in this picture and right next door is the markets where you can visit on a Thursday or Sunday and you can visit one of the amazing food stalls and they've got a huge range of cuisines um, from Indonesian, Sri Lankan, they've got Greek, they've got Japanese, absolute tons. And it's a great place to go for um, dinner and then just hop across the beach to the beach and watch um, the sunset. Darwin's really famous for our fiery orange uh, sunsets over the sea. So other than food in Darwin, there's plenty of experiences to, jo uh, to enjoy. You can take a sunset cruise on the harbour or a scenic flight over the wetlands. We've actually got um, a new jet ski product in um, Darwin Harbour called 007 Jet Ski Tours. And then for a real deep dive into the Northern Territory culture, you can visit the Tiwi Islands. So they're just a two and a half hour boat ride um, by ferry. So a really easy day trip. And you'll be taken on a guided tour by the locals who are incredibly friendly. And uh, they'll teach you about their traditional lifestyle. They'll show you stunning artworks, um, beautiful textiles and things. So moving on to uh, Kakadu National Park, it's a three and a half hour drive from Darwin and it's a really easy self-drive along sealed roads or you can actually book a guided tour from Darwin. So we recommend taking at least two days to see the park because it is so huge and there is so much to see. It's actually the largest national park in the whole of Australia and it's dual heritage listed for natural beauty and Aboriginal culture. 
So the guides in Kakadu are hugely knowledgeable. So we do recommend your clients book um, a guided tour as the best way to take it all in. So they'll learn about the ancient rock art, the traditional lifestyle of the local Aboriginal communities. And it's also a great place for wildlife spotting and to see phenomenal landscapes. Definitely recommend to your clients that they take a cruise along the Yellowwater Billabong. They'll see saltwater crocs and the landscape really is stunning, especially just after the tropical summer when they've had all the rain. The wildlife will be super active and the plant life is in full bloom, so it's a great time to go. Recommend that they watch sunset at Ubo Beer Rock for incredible views. They'll get amazing photos here. And there are some also some really stunning swimming holes where you can take a cool dip and just soak in your natural surroundings. Um, of course, always check the signs and only swim where it's 100% safe, but it's a really special place to swim. So Nitmaluk National Park is another one of our stunning national parks in the top end. And it's about a three hour drive south of Darwin and south of Kakadu as well. It's again, a very straightforward drive along sealed roads, but you can also take a tour from Darwin. Take at least two days to visit Nitmaluk. You've probably uh, all heard of Catherine Gorge. Um, that's what Nitmaluk National Park is most famous for. Uh, it's a really great place to visit for nature lovers. You can fish, you can bird watch, you can take long walks. The scenery is really fantastic. And to explore the gorges, you can kayak or canoe, or you can take a scenic flight in a helicopter to get epic views from above, or you can hike. Um, we really recommend clients book a cruise through the gorge is the best way to see the gorge um, and there are really amazing dinner crews available um, you basically eat a fantastic meal at sunset as the sunset goes across the gorges and it is really beautiful other activities to recommend to your clients in Nitmaluk um, visit Tom Curtin's Catherine Outback experience to watch live horse breaking and also visit some of the natural hot springs um, such as in this photo so this is a photo of bitter springs um, but they can also visit Mataranka or Catherine Hot Springs. So they're, there's like a natural spa. You literally just um, sit back and glide around in the water and it's just a really relaxing day. So there's actually a really easy itinerary on our website, which encompasses everything I've just spoken about in the top end. It's called the Nature's Way Driving Route and you can download it on northernterritory.com. Um, and recommended time for this itinerary is five or six days. So now we move down to the Red Centre, Australia's outback, which holds uh, icons such as Uluru and Kings Canyon and Katajuta. Um, the Red Centre, as you can see, drastically contrasts with the top end. It consists of red desert and incredibly unique rock formations. It's such a contrasting holiday if you pack both in. The Red Centre has a slightly different climate to the tropical top end. It actually has four seasons. Um, September is springtime and it's a really popular time to visit because the climate is mild, so between 14 and 30 degrees, and the wildflowers are in bloom and there is abundance of baby animals and wildlife. And then the winter months, which is June to August, are also great for outdoor activities like mountain biking, hiking, bushwalking and things. So I'll begin with Alice Springs, which you can fly to from most major Australian cities, including Darwin. And you can also drive from South Australia or down from Darwin. Um, and the Garn train also stops off in Alice. So Alice is a real authentic outback town. It's surrounded by Red Desert and the McDonald Ranges, and there's plenty to explore. So stay here a couple of nights to make the most of it. A really popular activity is to watch the sunrise over the town with outback ballooning, such as in this picture. You get up super early, jump in a hot air balloon and go up into the air while sunrise comes up over the town and the McDonald Ranges. It's a really spectacular um, experience. The Telegraph Station is um, a place of interest, definitely, if you want to learn about the history of Alice. It's actually built on the original site of the first European settlement in Alice Springs. And there are buildings which you can explore and walk around. And it's actually a really just pretty place to visit and immerse yourself in. And then a few other ways to learn about Alice Springs is to visit the Alice Springs School of the Air, where they school children of the outback remotely. And the Royal Flying Doctor Service, where you'll see how they provide medical care for such rural areas. There's also plenty of hiking to do or mountain biking. It's a very adventurous uh, town. But for those of the those of your clients that don't want to hike too much and um, they can just climb Anzac Hill for a simple hike and watch um, sunset over Alice Springs. Alice actually has a really cool kind of lively bar and cafe and culture now so we do recommend staying at least a couple of nights to enjoy what it has to offer. 
So from Alice, you can either drive or you can fly to Uluru. Driving takes about five hours and the flight is about half an hour. So Uluru, or Ezrock as it's commonly known, is over 600 million years old and it holds such a huge spiritual significance to the local people and the traditional owners. No Australian itinerary really would be complete without visiting such a significant icon. It's dual heritage listed for natural beauty and ancient culture. And there are actually over 100 activities to do around Uluru. So we recommend staying here at least two days to explore. We always recommend starting your visit with a base walk. You can actually get close enough to touch the rock and see the ancient rock art and experience just how significant this icon is. The full base walk is about 10 kilometers, but there are also uh, shorter versions available. And um, just like in Kakadu, we recommend taking a ranger guided tour because this is the best way to get the most out of the walk in the area. And they'll educate you on the significance of the spiritual place. And they'll teach you about dream time and the rock art. Um, but if your clients don't want to walk, there are plenty of other ways to get around, including by motorbike, you can go by Harley Davidson. You could go by Segway or just push bike. And you can experience the rock from above um, by skydiving, the adventure seekers, um, or a helicopter ride such as in this picture. And you can even ride a camel at sunset for views of Uluru from afar. Now, definitely have your clients visit Field of Light. I'm sure you've all heard of it, but um, it's an art installation created by the famous Bruce Munro. And it's made up of 50,000 spheres of light spanning an area the size of seven football fields. It's really spectacular. And actually, it was meant to be temporary, but it has been so popular that they've extended it indefinitely. Another really interesting experience is dot painting with Marikou Arts. You'll learn about this interesting way of painting with an indigenous guide and have a go at it yourselves. Another really popular activity is a dining experience. So you can see bottom left here, um, this is Sounds of Silence. Um, we've got two amazing sounds of, um, dining experiences, Sounds of Silence and Taliwiru. They're both incredible. So you'll, be, you'll drink Australian beer and wine whilst the sun sets over Uluru, and then you'll eat a delicious meal under the stars. Um, they're both very special experiences. I guess the difference is that Taliwiru is really luxurious. Um, it's a lot more intimate and private. Um, but it also costs more. So that would be a great idea for clients that are um, celebrating a lovely occasion like an anniversary or a birthday. Um, but Sounds of Silence is a bit uh, cheaper and it's still an epic experience. And then the final place I want to speak to you about is Kings Canyon. So Kings Canyon is set in Wataka National Park. It's a three hour drive from Uluru and it is a 300 meter high sandstone wall with incredible views that stretch across the desert. So there are walking trails, there are four by four tracks, there are camel rides. Um, so if your clients feel like exploring, there's plenty to do. The most popular activity probably is the Kings Canyon Rim Walk, which you can see in this picture. So it's a six kilometer circuit um, and you'll start off in a beautiful rock hole called the Garden of Eden and it's surrounded by rare plants. And then you'll ascend to 360 degree panoramic views over the desert. Um, so it's suitable for kind of relatively fit travelers. The first 500 steps of the rim walk is the most challenging, but you can take your time, stop whenever you want, um, bring lots of water, um, but the view from the top will be worth it. Um, and the rest of the walk isn't hard at all. Um, we definitely recommend tackling it at sunrise and um, before the temperature rises, and it will take between three to four hours. And then we also, oh, sorry, Molly. I just right, got we've got one minute left. Um, oh, okay. if, if you're happy to move into questions, that would yeah, be great. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, we've got Elaine is asking about the Tiwi Islands. Um, she's asking, does any tour company do offer a boat one way and flight the other way? Um, I don't actually know that, but Elaine, I'll find out for you and I can um, follow up with you separately. Great, thank you. Um, and Amanda's asking about uh, the prices for hot air balloon rides. Are you able to give any insight into how much it would cost and any operators that offer them? So Outback Ballooning will be your go-to, um, but I can again send you um, a link or I can send you prices separately. I don't know the, off the top of my head. Okay. <laughs> Um, we also have a question there about uh, accommodation near Uluru. Um, so if you're able to contact, uh, I can see it's Lam, Lam Singh Sim directly um, and answer that question, that would yeah. be wonderful. Um, yeah. But for everyone who's watching, um, please answer the questions in the polls tab and move into training room nine where Qantas is starting right now. Thanks, Thanks very much. Guys. Thank you. Bye.